Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scarecrow for here and welcome back to another Minecraft Path to Build tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building RMS Titanic. RMS Titanic was a British passenger liner operated by the White Star Line, which sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912, exactly 110 years ago. After striking an iceberg during her maiden voyage from Southampton, UK to the New York City. Of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard, more than 1,500 died, which made it the, the sinking possibly one of the most deadliest for a single ship up to that time. It remains to this day the deadliest peacetime sinking of a superliner or cruise ship. The disaster drew much public attention, provided fundamental material for disaster film genre, and has inspired many artistic works. Armas Titanic was the largest ship afloat at the time she entered service, and the second of three Olympic-class ocean liners operated by the White Star Line. She was built by the Hardland and Wolf Shipyard in Belfast. Thomas Andrews, who was the chief naval architect of the shipyard at the time, died in the disaster. Titanic was under the command of Captain Edward Smith, who went down with the ship. The ocean liner carried some of the wealthiest people in the world, as well as hundreds of immigrants from Great Britain and Ireland. Scandinavia and elsewhere throughout Europe, who were seeking a new life in the United States and Canada. The first class accommodation was designed to be the pinnacle of comfort and luxury, with a gymnasium, swimming pool, libraries, high class restaurants, and um, opulent cap cabins. A high powered radio telegraph transmitter was available for sending passenger uh, markograms and for the ship's operational use. The Titanic had advanced safety features such as watertight compartments and remotely activated watertight doors. The ship was equipped with 16 lifeboat davits, which each capable of lowering 3 lifeboats, for a total of 48 boats. The Titanic carried only 20 lifeboats, 4 of which were collapsible and provided, proved hard to launch while the ship was sinking. Together, the 20 lifeboats were capable of holding 1,178 people, which is only about half the number of passengers on board, and only one third of the number of passengers that the ship could have carried at full capacity. In addition, the ship sank many of the lifeboats had been either lowered or only about half full. So yeah, the RMS Titanic, it's one of the most famous names of any ship I would say in history. It obviously was a very devastating moment, but we also learned a lot about maritime safety and what has basically directly influenced the um, kind of maritime operations that we have now, especially in terms of having enough lifeboats for the um, amount of passengers you're carrying. Overall, very sad incident, but I thought it would be good to kind of honor the Titanic and all that, especially on its 110th anniversary of its sinking, and uh, just to have a nice display model for it here in our 1 to 10 or 1 to 5 scale that we uh, do most of our BAFTA builds in, or really all of them. Um, so with that, uh, we can go and dive in here to take a look at the Titanic. If you built my Olympic, you're going to see a lot of similarities to it. It's just not camouflaged and um, doesn't have those. Uh, mounted guns, but let's go and take a look here at the Titanic. So, to begin with, we have the bow of the ship here, you have all your front um, anchor systems, your rigging, your forward mass, as well as this little crane that they have here on the front deck. Uh, as we progress back further, we have some more cranes here, and then we have the cargo hatches, which are located in this section here. And then we have the bridge for the ship in this section, and as we work our way back, we have the kind of first set of lifeboat. Um, basically lifeboats so this would be the first set right here and then you have your first um, you know funnel here which is part of the iconic four um, for the uh, for the Titanic and all the detail in here on the top for basically where all the first class um, accommodations and stuff like that would be pretty much all in this area here and as we continue to go back we continue to have all that deck stuff going on here and funnels and all that stuff and as we progress further back here, we have again in the, the rear cargo hold, this one also equipped with some cranes. So we have some various cranes here on the back and right there. So uh, lots of cranes to quickly load and offload the ship uh, when they rise into port. And we have the stern here of the ship, nothing too fancy going on here. Uh, we have the props set up here as well as the hull and, um, you know, done up in its nice black and white color scheme there with the gold accent for the funnels. Um, that the Titanic was um, was rocking at the time of its sinking. Anyways, really cool ship um, and a really sad history behind it, but should be a fun build to add. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for the Titanic for quite some time, so I'm happy to finally oblige and uh, give you guys this um, tutorial. Anyways, though, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial 
by beginning with our first layer layer number one. Alright guys, so begin with our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and start off with layer one for the ship. Now if you're completely new to my path to build tutorials, the way I like to structure these first few layers here where we're just building the whole of the ship, is I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the center line of the ship, then the right side, and it'll be up to you guys in between layers to copy the right side over to the left side to go ahead and complete the layer all together. It's pretty straightforward and once we kind of make progress for the first, uh, layers don't make sense but once we get into the complicated stuff like getting into the superstructure and all that stuff we will uh, go back to doing it all together to make it a little bit easier so just keep that in mind um, as we progress through this and let's go ahead and dive into it now layer one here is an important layer for us to go ahead and kind of get started here because this kind of dictates the height that the ship sits in the water obviously I imagine a lot of you guys will want to build this in the water underwater who knows but it's very important to make sure that this is sitting properly if you want to have this afloat now, to make sure you have this correct, you can see here this line of blue concrete represents the water level. You can see here that the layer 1 here sits right below that water level. Very important to make sure that's correct because if you build it too high, too low, it's going to sit really weird and not going to look right. So, again, make sure that's correct. Once you're uh, good with that and you're sure you're all correct and good to go, we'll go ahead and get started here. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to build a long line of red concrete. This row right here is going to go all the way down the center of our ship and it's going to end at 47 blocks in total so from that first block there to this back block at 27 block or sorry 47 blocks going to the front we're going to place down two brick top subs so come off this red concrete block at two brick top subs going forward and then for the back here we're going to go ahead and go back from this um this block right here so this red concrete block with a end rod a birchwood slab a another red concrete block and another brick up sound stair and that right there is going to make the center line there of the ship. With that complete, we're going to go ahead and then place down a red stained glass pane coming off the second red concrete block from front, a brick um, brick wall after that, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38 red concrete blocks back. Followed by will be two or sorry one brick upside on stair and then a brick top slab with a acacia wood sign on the side of that slab and then we're just going to place down two brick stairs back a end rod and then an air birch wood slab like so our next row out to the side is going to start off by going to the front again we're going to count back one two three in our third red concrete block we're going to place down a brick top slab we then want to place down a second top slab and then one two three four five brick upside on stairs Fall by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Red concrete blocks back. We're going to go and then take our brick stairs. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4 bricks up down stairs, and then two brick top slabs. Just like that. And with that all complete, the last thing for us to do is just to go ahead and grab a stone button, and we're just going to place down a stone button on both sides of this red concrete block here on the back for the rudder. With that all done, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number one. Taking a look at it from above, this is what it should look like from the top down view. Again, take away down the right side, flip over to the left side, and that will complete that. With that though, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number two. Moved into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a brick wall on top of this um, brick top slab here, and we're going to go ahead and place down one more brick wall forward. Going back from this, we're going to place down one, two, three red concrete blocks like so. Then we want to go ahead and go out to the side of the middle red concrete block with a glass pane and then a brick wall. And then we're going to go back one, two, three, and four red concrete blocks back like that. We're going to go then uh, pause the front there for a moment and we're going to go and move to the back of the ship. On top of this upside down stair here, we're going to place down a brick stair, then a red concrete block, a brick upside down stair, a second stair upside down coming off of it so it creates kind of an arch here. And then we want to place down two red concrete blocks going back from that upside down brick stair. We're also going to place down a stone button here on both sides of this stone block here. Then we're going to place down a red stained glass pane on the side of this first red concrete block, then a brick wall, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five red concrete. On the last two blocks here, we're going to place down two brick walls and then two red stained glass panes going forward. We're going to then take our red concrete, we're going to place down a row going forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34 red concrete blocks forward, a brick wall, and then a red stained glass pane, just like that to go and finish that off. 
Once you have that all done right there, that is going to basically complete what we have for layer 2. You can also go ahead and take the option of filling the inside in here with red concrete as well. It's not necessary, but that right there is just kind of the minimum outline you'll need there for the layer complete. So here is an overview from up above of what that should look like from the top down view. And again, from the side here, just like that. So again, you'll transfer the right side over to the left side. And once you have that complete there, that will wrap up what we have for layer number 2. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three for layer three to get started with here we're gonna go ahead and place down a polished black stone wall on top of this brick wall here and then we're gonna place down one two three and four brick or sorry black concrete blocks back we then want to place down a black stained glass pane on the side here of the block here and then a polished black stone wall back from that and then one two three black concrete blocks we're gonna place down a polished black stone wall come off the side of that black concrete then one glass pane going forward and then going back from the wall we're gonna place down one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37 of these black concrete blocks back. I'm going to go and double check our count here, and it should in total, again, be 37. We're going to go and then uh, go to the back center here. We're going to go on top of this red concrete block. We're going to place down a black concrete block, then one and two more going toward the front of the ship. We're going to go and then go off the last two blocks here. We're going to place down two black stained glass paints. Then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five black concrete blocks forward. We're going to go ahead and place down two polished black stone walls here, and then two black stained glass panes going back from those walls like that along the side. And once you have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for this layer. Again, you'll take the right side, copy it over to the left side, and that right there will pretty much wrap up what we have there. Again, here's an overview from up above of what it should look like from the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we've gone ahead and moved on to layer number four. For layer four to get started with, you're going to place down a polished black stone wall on top of this wall here, and then we're going to place down one, two, and three black concrete blocks back from that wall. We're going to go then go to the rear, and we're going to go ahead and basically build our center line back here. This is going to be a brick, um, or sorry, a black uh, concrete full block here, then a brick top slab, and then a um, dark oak wood trap door going back from this. Uh, there also is going to be a wither skeleton skull right here coming off this uh, black concrete block uh, like that on the bottom there and that right there is going to form up this back here. Now once we have that done, we have our center line complete, we're going to go and start building our way out to the sides. We're going to start off by placing down a black stained glass pane coming off this middle black concrete block here in the front and then a polished black stone wall back from that. On the side of the glass pane, we're going to place down an item frame and then in the item frame, we're going to place down a crossbow which we're going to rotate to face downwards to go ahead and make the anchor. After that, going back from this wall, we're going to place down one, two, three, four of these black concrete blocks, and then we're gonna place down a polished black stone wall here, and two black stained glass panes going forward. We then wanna take our black concrete, go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and 41 black concrete blocks back. We're going to follow this up with a polished black stone upside down stair, then a polished black stone uh, top slab. On the inside here, ne next to this top slab, we're going to place down a black concrete block here, and then one more back. And then we're going to place down a narrow polished black stone top slab, come off that black concrete block there. And then a dark oak wood trap door, come off this top slab there, right, right there. And you're just going to go ahead and basically do the same thing on both sides there. And again, here is an overview of what it should look like from the top down view, with that all complete. At this point in time, I would also like to go ahead and point out that I would like basically to fill in the whole deck here with spruce wood planks. Um, so we're going to go and just take spruce wood and fill this all in. Now this will not all be visible from the outside of the ship, but I would like to just go ahead and fill it all in just because it's easier just to kind of fill it in than to try to, you know, figure out what spots in particular do need to have the spruce wood decking. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and fill this all in on the inside here of the ship to go ahead and create our deck for... Um, for the uh, Titanic. And just like that we have our deck filled in and this right here is what it should look like from the top down view. With that all complete that is it for layer 4 and that's going to be the last layer where we do half on half off. For the rest of these layers we will be doing both layers all together as we start to get into the detail especially in the superstructure area. So with that let's go ahead and dive into our next layer layer number five. Alright guys, so moving into layer five. Layer five here is definitely going to be our longest layer. We do have a lot to do, so just make sure you pay close attention and uh, you should have no problem getting through it. 
To go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with by placing down a direct wall on the very front here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a smooth quartz block right behind that. We're also going to go ahead and then place down two spruce wood full blocks going down the center here. On both sides of this quartz full block, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. Now note when I say quartz, I am referring to smooth quartz. We will be using smooth quartz throughout the entire build as smooth quartz is a lot cleaner of a block to use. So just keep that in mind, try to avoid using normal quartz. We're going to go then place down a quartz upside down stair and then upside down corner stair like so. Same thing will be done over here, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then take our spruce slabs. We're going to go ahead and do a row of three across this section here. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood sign on both ends like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down another spruce slab, or sorry, spruce slab there in the center, a direct wall to both sides, and then we're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like this to both ends. We're going to place down another smooth quartz block here in the center. This is going to be followed up with a skeleton skull to both sides, and then we're going to place down a spruce slab on the far outside like so, with a birchwood sign on the side of that slab like that. Next row here is going to be a direct wall here in the center. Again, a spruce wood slab to both sides, and then a second slab. And again, this will have a birchwood sign on the side of that slab. And same thing over here. Once we have that done, we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of this slab here, as well as this slab. And then we're going to place down a daylight detector here, followed by a end rod that's going to go back from that daylight detector. And then another daylight detector, just like that. After we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a quartz top slab in this section here and then we want to go ahead and place down an end rod coming off the quartz top slab to both sides as well as a grindstone like so. We'll then take spruce or some spruce pressure plates and we're just going to place down a row of three here and same thing over here a row of three going forward like so. After we have that done it's going to kind of form up our front deck and we're going to continue working on toward the back. For this we're going to place down a quartz upside down stair followed by a second stair to the sides. So you have a row of three, and then a corner stair, of quartz, on the side. On the side of this corner stair, we're going to place down a birchwood sign on both sides. And we're going to go ahead and place down another quartz stair going back from that corner stair. Again, on both sides here. And we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the back of that stair, like so. At this point in time, we'll go ahead and then fill in the inside here, between these quartz upside down stairs, with spruce wood planks, like that. Now, once we have that done, we have a long row of quartz upside down stairs that's going to run all the way along the ship here. So after this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 quartz upside down stairs. And on your last uh, quartz upside down stair, we're just going to place down a birchwood sign like so. And we're going to go in very simply do the same thing over here on this side. So just like that. And again, our last stair here, we'll have a spruce, or, I'm sorry, a birchwood sign. Now at this point, we then want to go ahead and grab our uh, quartz slabs. We're going to place down a quartz slab here in the center. And then we want to go and then place down a row of one, two, three of quartz. A narrow quartz slab to this side, and then a quartz full block there in the center. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and fill this whole space in. Now from this back to the front with spruce wood planks. So we're just going to fill in the whole space here in the middle. So just like that, and that will get completely filled in. Now what we have next to do is probably one of the more time consuming parts of this layer. We're going to go and go into our creative menu, we're going to grab an item frame, as well as a black bed. We're going to go to the remaining quartz stairs on the side here of the ship, and we just want to go and place down item frames all the way along the side of these stairs. So it's going to go all the way back. And we're going to then place down black beds in each one of these item frames. And it is going to be time consuming. There is quite a bit of beds to place. And you're just going to go all the way along the side here. Like so. And preferably, it will look even better if you rotate them. So again, that time consuming feature of rotating these all these beds. So just like that, all the way along the side there. Now if you're on Java, we can also go ahead and add birchwood signs all the way along the side here of these quartz stairs as well. And what this does, it just kind of helps hide the item frames a little bit better. Just kind of creates a better overall look for the side of the ship, I think. And personally, I just like it. So that's why we're doing this. And again, this is going to be Java only. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you're not able to place item frames and signs in the same block space. If that's the case, not a big deal. Just go ahead and place down the 
um, item frames and don't even worry about the sign portion. But the signs here, as you'll see once we kind of take a step back here, really help kind of bring this all together and make this look a lot more flush with the side of the ship. So just like that, going all the way along the ship and you can see it looks really nice. It just makes it look really, really good. And again, it's time consuming, but the payout I think is really good. You get that nice detail of kind of those larger, kind of more um, rectangular windows that are on this kind of um, first, uh, I guess, deck above um, the hole. Anyways, once you have that done, you're going to take the same thing and copy it over to the other side. And as you can see, I went ahead and transferred it over to the other side and we have both sides complete now. Once we have uh, both sides complete, we're going to go ahead and then basically continue on uh, building. And this is going to be a direct wall on both sides going back from the stairs, followed by a, another quartz slab going back from those two right there, and then a smooth quartz full block there in the center. We're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a grindstone. We're going to place down a grindstone to both sides like so. An end rod coming off those grindstones going back, and then a skeleton skull coming off those end rods just like that. In the center here, we're going to place down another smooth quartz full block as well as a, another one going back like that in between those end rods. And once we have that done, we're going to go and place down a daylight detector here, a end rod, and then a narrow daylight detector going back from that. Uh, after that, we're going to go then place down a row of three of direct walls. They're going to go across this section here, followed by a quartz stair like this to both sides. And on the sides of those quartz stairs, we are going to place down birchwood signs. So on the outsides here, just like that. We'll then take spruce pressure plates, and we're just going to run spruce pressure plates on the black concrete like that to go and keep that deck color consistent. We're going to go and then uh, take some quartz full blocks again. We're going to place down a row of five going all the way across here, followed by a second row of five. And actually, rather instead of doing rows of five there, we're actually going to go and do a quartz block on the outsides there and then a row of three of spruce wood in the center. So just go and make that quick adjustment. Uh, we then want to place down two direct walls going back from those blocks like so. And then we're going to place down one and two, one and two smooth quartz blocks and then two spruce wood planks there in the center. We then want to place down another spruce wood plank in the center here, followed by a smooth quartz block to both sides there, a smooth quartz block on the end here, and we're going to go and grab ourselves some white stained glass panes. We're going to place down a stained glass pane in the corners here, and we'll change out this one uh, direct wall here for a uh, white stained glass pane as well to kind of help um, shape the back a little bit better. And yeah, that right there will basically complete what we have there for that. And with that, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number five of the build. Like I said, that right there is probably going to be one of our longer layers just because we have a lot going on. The next layer will probably be long as well. Uh, but after we get through those layers there, it's going to kind of be smooth sailing, um, no pun intended. And we'll basically be able to knock out the rest of the stuff pretty quickly. But anyways, that right there is it for layer five. Again, here's an overview of what it should look like from the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number six moving into our next layer we have layer number six for layer six to go ahead and get started with you're going to place down a um end rod that's going to be on top of this uh and for this um direct wall here in the front we're going to go ahead and place down a spruce wood slab or sorry spruce wood um, pressure plate back from that we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames we're going to place down item frames here on both sides there and in those item frames we're going to place down black concrete if you're on java we'll go ahead and also place down a polished black stone button on the top of the stair as well, but again, that'll be for Java players. After that, we're going to go and then go back from that with a redstone dust piece. If you are not on Bedrock, or if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you may want to just place down the button so that your um, your dust actually kind of goes back and actually kind of looks like anchor chains. Um, so that's kind of just a suggestion there. You may want to just disregard the item frames and place the button instead, um, but again, kind of up to you guys and what you want to do. We're going to go ahead and place down an end rod here on top of the spruce wood plank. And then on top of the spruce wood slab here, we're going to go ahead and place down a chain. So, just like that. And while we're at it on the front here, we might as well just go ahead and build this crane. It's pretty simple, and we can just knock it out so we don't have to worry about it later. This is going to be a spruce wood, or a, sorry, skeleton skull on top of that end rod. A end rod going back from the skeleton skull, and then a skeleton skull coming off the end rod. So, really simple there for the crane, and that's going to complete that right there. We're going to go ahead and place down an item frame on top of this black con or this uh, quartz block and then a black concrete block in that item frame and then we just want to go ahead and place down a spruce wood fence post going up from this uh, direct wall to kind of get it started there for what will be our front forward mass after that's all done we're going to go back to our cranes here we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of these two um, grindstones and we're going to come back to these a little bit later and revisit them but for the time being we're going to leave them as is now we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves our quartz stairs we're going to place down a row of three of quartz ups down stairs across the front here. We'll place down item frames across those and then we're going to place down black beds 
in those item frames like that to go ahead and form the bridge. And we'll also rotate these beds so that they face this direction, like so. And if you're on Java, we'll also go ahead and place down a birchwood sign, only on the middle one. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we're going to place a birchwood sign on the middle stair, again, for us Java players. Then after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door to both sides. And then coming off that iron trap door, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. So just like this. And if you're on Java, we can go ahead and also place down an item frame here to both sides like that. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, smooth quartz and we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve smooth quartz blocks down the center here. We're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six direct walls back and same thing over here one two three four five six direct walls we're gonna go then place down a quartz full block to both sides and if you're on java we'll place down our item frame here on both sides and then we'll place down a black bed in the item frame like so again that'll be only for java players um, to be able to place that item frame we're gonna go then place down an air quartz full block to both sides and then taking our direct walls again we're gonna go back one two three one two three and we're going to go then place down a quartz slab to both sides. At this point in time, we'll go ahead and focus our attention here now to the outsides. And this is where we start to get into the lifeboats and all that. So this right here is going to start with an end rod on both sides here. We then want to go ahead and place down a quartz slab. Now for this, we want to go ahead and kind of use a different quartz uh, block to kind of show a little bit of a different change in the appearance of these ships. So for me, I went ahead and kind of used um, just regular quartz. You could also probably use polished diorite. Might be a good block to use to just kind of help tell the lifeboats a little bit par apart from the build and kind of help them stand out. So yeah, we'll go ahead and use polished diorite. They stand out a little bit better and they kind of will, I guess, make it stand out that there's something different there and then not just the whole structure. So we have that right there. And we're gonna go then place down a birchwood fence gate and open it up to the outside. We're gonna place down an air polished diorite slab and air fence gate out to the side here. A another slab, an air fence gate here open to the side. Then another slab, and then this time a end rod. And we're gonna go do the same thing over here. So we have our slab, our fence gate. Again, open this toward the outside here. Uh, another slab, fence gate, slab, fence gate, slab, and then we're gonna have our end rod like so. And just so we don't have to worry about this later, we'll go ahead and finish this off by just placing down a row of string that's gonna go all the way across the tops here of those slabs, those fence gates, and the end rods. A very minor detail, but just kind of shows some of the rigging here that um, you know is basically contributing to these boats and lifeboats and be able to launch them and stuff like that. So very minor detail, but if you kind of look, you can see it and just kind of adds out a little bit of detail into that area. After that's done, we're going to go then grab our spruce pressure plates and we're just going to place down one, two, three, and same thing over here, one, two, three, back like so. At this point here, we're going to go then place down a quartz slab in the center here, and we want to go and then place down a cobweb back from it and another spruce or sorry, another quartz slab. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of quartz full blocks going down the center, and we'll go ahead and kind of build out from the sides here from this. So we're going to go ahead and place down a direct wall to both sides of this first slab here, a slab on both sides of the cobweb, a narrow direct wall to both sides of that slab, a quartz slab to both sides of this quartz full block, another direct wall to both sides of that quartz full block there, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater, like so, on top of those um, spruce wood planks there. We're going to go and then take our uh, oakwood, or, sorry, spruce pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five. And over here, same thing, one, two, three, four, and five. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves a spruce wood trap door. And we're going to place it down on both sides here, just like that. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go and then place down an iron trap door. Coming off this quartz block here. And then we're going to place down two quartz full blocks back from it, as well as two direct walls here to the sides. We're going to go and place down two spruce pressure plates here on both sides and then an air spruce trap door like this to both ends. Once we have that all done there we want to go ahead and then take our uh, daylight detectors here place that one and two like this and we're gonna go ahead and place down a redstone repeater like this to both sides of the daylight detector and then an end rod to both sides of those daylight or of those redstone repeaters. Once we have uh, that all done there we're gonna go ahead and then uh, place down a quartz bl full block going back from those daylight detectors, which we actually want to turn to the night mode as well. So that kind of uh, bluish gray. 
We're gonna go ahead and place down. We have two, three, and four of these quartz full blocks. Then a quartz slab, a quartz full block, and then another full block back from that. To the sides here, we're gonna place down a quartz slab here to both sides of that full block. And we wanna go ahead and then take our quartz stairs. We're gonna place down one, two, one, two, and then another quartz slab after those stairs. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a quartz slab here in the corners, like that on both sides there. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves our kind of polished uh, diorite slabs again in our fence gates. We're going to place down a slab here of uh, the polished diorite going back from those end rods. We're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate both sides, an air slab, a air fence gate, a slab, a fence gate, a slab, both sides like that. And that right there will kind of complete this section here of that. We'll go ahead and grab our strings and we're just going to run strings around the tops of the slabs tops of the fence gates and we're just gonna run this uh, all the way along the side here so going forward same thing over here so just like this once we have that all done we're gonna go ahead and then place down a grindstone on top of these walls here and we will then place down an end rod going back from those grindstones like so as well as a skeleton skull coming off the end rods just like that and then once we have that all done there we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some brown carpet we're going to place down two brown carpets here all over those slabs and then we're going to go ahead and place down a spruce pressure plate here as well as a diorite wall on top of that quartz full block right there and once we have that done there we're also going to place down a skeleton skull which will go on top of these two um, on top of those two grindstones just like that with that done, going ahead and moving back to this section here, we're going to go ahead and place down a grindstone that's going to be on top of these two stairs. So just like this, we're going to go ahead and place down a end rod, go in between the grindstones, and then a quartz top slab between them, like so. We then want to place down a skeleton skull, which is going to go on top of those grindstones, and while we're at it, we can also go ahead and place them down on top of these grindstones as well. Now, once we get to this point here on the back, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone up here with a notch spread apart and then a skeleton skull on top of the spruce wood plank after that we're going to then place down two spruce wood pressure plates to both sides there and we're going to then place down redstone up here with a notch spread apart as well as a skeleton skull on both sides of these quartz full blocks we then want to place down a quartz upside down stair here on top of these glass panes like so and then one two three quartz top slabs across in between them we're going to place down a, a birchwood sign on both sides of the quartz stairs. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater here in the center with the notches spread apart, as well as a spruce pressure plate on both sides on those two quartz full blocks. Lastly here, we're just going to go ahead and place down an end rod that goes up like this. And we'll go ahead and then place down a second end rod that comes up from it, going upwards at an angle like that to go ahead and wrap that up. And uh, we'll also, at this point in time, take our iron trap doors and we'll just place down a row across those um, blocks right there on the back as well. Now, at this point, you pretty much have the main structure of the ship complete. And again, kind of a longer layer. We have a lot of detailing going on and stuff like that we're doing. But this is what it should look like from the top-down view. At this point in time, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and do some extra little detail. And it's a very minor detail, but something that kind of helps bring a little bit more design to the ship. And that's going to be using the debug stick. So we'll go ahead and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. Press enter, we'll get this glowing stick. What we're going to do here is we're going to go and go to the side where these cranes are. We're going to kind of go to this side here. So it's going to be a little bit off to the side, just like this on both sides here. We'll start with our front cranes. We're going to place down levers. We're going to use our debug stick here. We're going to left click it until we get selected face. We're going to right click until it says to face to floor. We'll then go ahead and then left click it again until we get selected facing and we're going to rotate these so that the lever is pointing toward the skeleton skulls. Now it's a very minor detail but when we pull away and look at it, it adds a little bit more to the cranes and makes them look a little bit more well shaped and that's basically all we're doing for that. We're going to go do the same thing here for the back cranes. So we're just going to go ahead and take our debug stick here and we'll have it face the floor and then we're going to go ahead and rotate these using our same techniques we did before, just like so, and we're going to do the same thing down here, so 
just like this. And again, we'll have this face the floor. And then we'll rotate this so it connects back to our skeleton skull. And then these two right here, same thing. Face to floor, face to floor. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate these like that. And again, a very minor detail, something that really doesn't need to be done, but if you just look at it, it just makes the cranes look a little bit better, I think. And just adds that extra little bit of detail to it, which we're always trying to strive for. Anyways, though, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number six for the build. And with that, we're probably going to move into our final layers and uh, go ahead and finish off our RMS Titanic. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our final layers here. We're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going to this fence post right here. We're going to place down a second fence post up from it, followed by a diorite wall. And we're going to go and then place down a block that kind of comes off this wall on an angle. Coming off the side of the block facing toward the front, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like so. And then on top of the skeleton skull, we're going to place down another block. And then we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of the block facing toward the rear. So just like that. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. We're going to place down one, two, and three end rods up. On your third end rod to both, si both sides, we're going to place down one more end rod like so. And then lastly, we're just going to place down an iron bar on the very top here of that end rod like so for forward mass. After that's done, we're going to go and then place down iron trap doors across those courts up downstairs here on the main superstructure, a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart, as well as a skeleton skull on top of those two walls there. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves gold blocks again. We're going to place down two gold blocks, followed by two quartz slabs to the sides here. Going up from these gold blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down uh, two more rows of two, so one and two. And on the very top here, we're just going to place down a row of black concrete. It's going to go across the top there for our first funnel. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down another skeleton skull on top of these walls. A redstone repeater with the notches spread apart. And then we want to go and then go back from that with our end rods, one and two end rods back. And then we're going to go and then place down our daylight detectors, which will be uh, one, two. Turn these to night mode. And we then want to place down our spruce pressure plates on top of those blocks. After that, we're going to go then place down a redstone comparator. That's going to go on top of this quartz block here. And we're going to go then place down again two blocks of gold, another two up, a third row of two, and then two black concrete blocks on top there for our second funnel. Continuing on, we're going to place down a spruce wood uh, pressure plate here. We then want to place down a skeleton skull, which will be on top of this um, cobweb here. And then after that, we're going to place down another spruce pressure plate right here. Followed by two blocks of gold here, and then we're just going to go ahead and build up a second row of two, a third row, and then a row of black concrete on the very top. We're going to go ahead and then place down a stone button uh, that will be on top of this block here. Two daylight detectors back. We're going to turn these to the night mode as well. And we then want to place down skeleton skulls on the walls here next to those um, daylight detectors. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a redstone repeater that's going to go on top of this quartz block here. We're going to separate the notches like so. And we then want to place down two blocks of gold, an air two up, and an air two just like that. And then two uh, black concrete blocks like that to go ahead and complete our funnels. And then we're just going to place down an air redstone repeater on top of this quartz full block like so. For our rear mass, it's going to be very similar to what we did in the front here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off by taking our spruce wood fence posts. We're going to place down two fence posts up from that court or that diorite wall. We're going to place down a block like so, a or rather sorry, a block like this. Skeleton skull coming off it toward the front block on top of the skeleton skull, the skeleton skull come off the side, and then we're going to go up two, three, or sorry, one, two, three end rods, a end rod to both sides of the third one, and then lastly, a iron bar on the very top to go ahead and complete our rear mass of the ship, like so. So with that all done, that's pretty much the main structure there for the ship. What we have left to do is going to be the rigging. So the rigging here is pretty straightforward and really not too difficult to do. We're just going to need barrier blocks. If you're not familiar with barrier blocks, you can use the command slash give space at p space minecraft colon barrier and it should um, pop up or autofill and you should be able to just build it or select it like that. I believe on other versions, they're also called structure blocks, so you can use um, structure blocks as well. But basically, you just want an invisible block that you can place down buttons on the side. That's really all you want here. What we're going to do here is we're going to start off by placing down a barrier block here in this space. Then we're going to go ahead and kind of go up at a consistent angle, like so. So we're going to kind of keep going up like a staircase, all the way up until we connect to our top mass. And it should connect up right about at this point here, so it's right next to that end rod. 
We're gonna go ahead and place down stone buttons on the sides here, the barrier blocks, and we're only gonna do it on one side. So for us, we're gonna do it on the left side. We're not gonna do it on both. And then after we have that done, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our barrier blocks, and we wanna go ahead and place down one back from this one, stone button on the side of that block. Then we're gonna go ahead and go two back from this block right here. And then we're gonna place down two stone buttons. And then we want to go and just place down two barrier blocks coming off this um, skeleton skull. And again, two stone, button, stone buttons on the side there for that. And I'll make kind of our rigging here for our forward mass. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then take our barrier blocks. And we're going to place down two coming off this end rod. And then we want to place down three coming off that those uh, black concrete blocks. We're going to place down two buttons here on the side of these barrier blocks here. Then two on top. And then one on the side there. So again, we'll do it on just the one side of the block. Um, you can actually, for this one right here, you can do it on both sides if you really want to. Um, so that wouldn't hurt in this section there, but yeah, that right there is just gonna kinda connect it to like that. At this point, uh, we're gonna go and then take our barrier blocks and we're gonna go and just do a row all the way back from this end rod to our rear mass. So this is just gonna be a long row of barrier blocks going all the way back like so. And it's gonna connect up to our rear mass like so. Now we're gonna go and then take our stone buttons and we wanna place down a row across the top of these barrier blocks. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, stone buttons and we're gonna do the same thing back here. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now at this point, you're gonna pick a side of the barrier blocks and you're just gonna run the next row or the next section of stone buttons all the way along the side of the barrier blocks that do not have a button on top of them. So it's gonna be that whole midsection there. So again, we'll kind of take the barrier block from our menu or from our hand here and we'll get a better look at what we have going on here and as you can see we have kind of the buttons going here, here or the basically what would be the line the rigging and then it kind of droops down a little bit in the center and then it picks back up here on the rear so that kind of right there is what we want for that like that with that all done uh, we then have another uh, piece of uh, rigging here that's gonna come or it's, it's gonna start on top of this end rod right here so we're gonna build two blocks up we're gonna go ahead and go over and back one, two barrier blocks, and then we're gonna go ahead and place down one that comes down from this one right here. So it should look like this. We're gonna place down a button on the front side here, then on the side, front, and then on the side, and then this last one right here, the front like that for another line of that goes up here and connects up. Then for the back here, we're gonna go ahead and go to this um, end rod right below this one, so this second end rod here. We're going to place down a barrier block and we're going to go and just do an angle. So just like we did for the front, just a staircase consistently going downwards like so. And it's going to stop right before we get to this redstone repeater. We're going to go and do the same thing. Stone buttons like this along the side there. And for this line, you can do buttons on both sides if you want to. That is um, no problem. So if you do want to do that, you can do that on both sides as well. Then our last uh, line segment is going to be the rear. One that's going to connect up to our rear uh, little flagpole there, whatever you want to call it. So for this, uh, pretty simple. We're going to place down a barrier block coming off this end rod. We're going to go and then drop down at an angle with one. We're going to drop down again at an angle, one like that. Drop down at an angle again. This is going to be two. Then we want to drop down at an angle again like that. One, one, and then we're going to go and drop down to two like that going across. Now for our stone buttons, we're going to place down one, one, one. Then we're going to place down a button on top here. Once we get to our first segment of two, so on top of this one, then to the side, 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 then top, and side, like so. And once you have that all done right there, we can go ahead and throw our barrier block away. And that right there should con conclude the rigging. And with that, our final layers here for the Titanic. This is what it should look like with all the rigging in place and with everything complete. Overall, really cool ship and should make an awesome addition to any of your worlds. For those of you looking for a nice Titanic model, and probably one of the most famous ships in history, I would say. Anyways, guys, that right there is going to wrap up my tutorial here for the RMS Titanic. 110th anniversary of her sinking. Hope you guys do enjoy the build and are able to put it to good use. If you do want to use this build, I do ask you guys give me proper credit for it. This has been a thing from a side of the build to my channel or this video. If this uh, does appear on any social media sites, just make sure I get proper credit for it. That's all I ask for for doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting this type of content. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204 and I'll see you guys next time.